Welcome back to Up in the Blue Seats, our New York Rangers podcast from the New York Post. Jake Brown here with Rangers beat writer Molly Walker and the Post Larry Brooks is with us here in the open. We will have John Brancy, National Anthem Rangers opera singer coming up later to keep things a little positive. But we got to start with the negative because the Rangers crapped the bed in uh, at the Garden in their home building. Fans might have paid their rent to get into the building and they might be asking for a refund uh we'll get handed off to you first molly ladies first here on up in the blue seats what in lord's name happened back-to-back losses this thing's all tied up look the rangers weren't impressive in either games three or four but i do genuinely believe that game three was a toss-up went to overtime could have gone both ways we could be sitting with a 3-1 series right now you know it it it, it could have gone either way but game four was was pretty disappointing it, just in terms of the all-around effort no urgency zero regard for the possibility that they were going to completely lose their grip on this series but again everything that the rangers did incredibly well in games one and two just kind of disappeared and i think a, a really underrated part of that has been the power play um the power play score is four goals through the first two games um, and that was a huge part of of how they built that two to nothing series lead. And it's just gone absolutely cold in the last two games. So I think that's a pretty underrated part of it, but, but just a very disappointing showing in game four and the kind of loss that is going to give the devils confidence. And I think giving this devils team confidence is a death wish for this Rangers team. So we'll see how the rest of the series unfolds, but that game four loss uh, kind of set the tone for the rest of the series, which is not a good thing for the Rangers. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the word is disappointing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the feeling I've, I've, I think everyone is left with. Um, not so much disappointing that they lost, but but the way they played. Um, you know, they they um, the power play looked like. You know, the, the power play has been a feast or famine issue. Yeah. going going back for a while. I mean, when it's humming, it it looks. You know, it, it's on unstoppable. It. <laughs> yeah, potent. It, it gives it gives them a lot of their identity, their offensive identity. Of course, it does because their top players are on it. Um, and when their top players are feeling it on the power play, they're generally feeling it at five on five too. Um, the Devils have, you know, after the first two games, they've made adjustments. They uh, took Kreider away. Um, they they made it much more difficult to get the puck to Kreider. Um, they are forcing the Rangers at the top. They're they're taking away Adam Fox as much as they can. They're not allowing him to to enter the zone. Um, there's just puck pressure everywhere, and you know the power play is 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 a sum of its components. And right now, one of their components, Artemi Panarin, is 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 is, is just. Um, uh, you know his 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 play is, is has has deteriorated game by game. I would say, and and uh, you know when you have one of those guys and and such a critical guy um, not being not being able to meet the moment, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a major issue. Um, yeah, they they didn't have enough they didn't have enough anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and you know, the interesting thing which I was just thinking is. The Devils played extremely well. The De- the Rangers barely showed up, and it's a one-one game in the third period. Right. So you know, so it's it's not. It shouldn't be all gloom and doom on their side, but uh, they just need to pick it up. And and you know, when you, when their best players are being outplayed by the Devils' third and fourth lines, then then that's a, the third line really. Um, then that's really an issue. I mean. <laughs> You know, we're, we're in the same spot as we were last year. Zibanejad hasn't scored. Last year, Zibanejad was was dealing with uh, Sidney Crosby. Right. And then he was dealing in the second round with Jordan Stahl. Um, now he's kind of playing, you know, the matchups aren't, aren't set. Mm-hmm. Against, look, Nico Heischer is a good player, but he's not Crosby. Um, he's not on that much against Hughes. He hasn't been on that much against Hughes, that line. So, 
you know, Zibanejad hasn't scored. They have to have him scoring. He does. Yes, he does all of these other things, but that's that's part of it. You know, scoring is part of it. And he understands that. I talked to him for a fair amount of time after the game of, you know, just he and I speaking and he knows what's expected of him. He's, he's just got to do it. Panera now is a mystery. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I thought his first two games was disciplined. He, you know, he simplified his game. He was zero giveaways, zero giveaways. He was, he was part of that. He was, he was part of the effort. And the last two games, it just seems like he's become more and more frustrated. And I thought last night, um, it looked like he went into a shell almost. Yeah. You know, he, 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 I, I don't, he, there was, there was one cross ice pass he made, I think in the third period um that could have led to a goal um maybe it was a second but you know other than that it's hard to remember him having the puck Mm -hmm. so you know their top players Kane you know Kane was ineffective uh Kreider last night had his first ineffective game of the series I would say um yeah they just need more from everybody um the Devils look like they did during the regular season they look quick you know fast um unencumbered you know the first couple of games it looked like they you know maybe they were not ready for prime time and I think the I think to give them credit of course but I think the Rangers let them back in too by by uh um they they, you know they vowed not to allow the home crowd to impact them I think they did to a degree on Saturday Crowd's been as almost as disappointing as the Rangers, although, True. <laughs> you know, although, although, you know what, the Rangers are getting paid. Yeah, the, the right. Paid, you know? <laughs> it's, you know, but, but I think the atmosphere wasn't quite what, what we all expected. Um, there's a lot of work to do. And I think yeah. it's a good thing for the Rangers that they have a couple of days off. I think they need this. I think they need today to, to wash out the last two games. And I think tomorrow, uh, I think they need tomorrow to get back to work and and figure out a way, whether that means they're going to switch up their power play units. And I, I don't think it's a matter of, of personnel on the unit. Yeah, it's, it's, I asked I asked Turk last night if he was thinking that he would do that. And he did. He actually thought that the power play was a little bit better in game four, which yeah, I thought, I, thought I, which I, thought I guess. Yeah, still not producing, but. I, to some to a certain degree, I guess I agree, but it doesn't sound like he's going to make any personnel changes on the yeah. power plays. Yeah, and and that's fine. Um, you know, it's about execution. It uh, is, but more than it's about personnel, I think. Um, um, Schmid has changed the equation, mm-hmm. but what he's just. Have you seen him make a spectacular save? Yet? No, no. Really? So that's that's my that's my biggest point. I think two things. One. The disparity between the Rangers in games one and two and three and four are just, it's just so glaring. The team we saw in games one and two, I think, can win the cup. I mean, it, yes, the Devils weren't really putting up much of a fight, but still, the Rangers all around game from top to bottom, every aspect of it, Gallant called them perfect games. I think that those games one and two is a perfect blueprint. But then you look at games three and four, yeah, the Rangers dropped off and the Devils did take a step, but I'm still not looking at this devil's team, like, oh, they're going to go all the way to the cup. You know, like I, I, I'm not overly impressed. I think Jack Hughes has done great things. Um, I think as a team, they've picked up their game a little bit better, but I, I don't, they're not, they're not that much better. They're they're not that much better, you know, like. Exactly. And and again, the the Rangers played poorly in two games and it's one, one in overtime. Exactly. One, one in the third period. Exactly. It's not as if the devils are are shredding the Rangers. Um, Yeah. um, They're not, but, but, but they're bottling up the Rangers and they're frustrating the Rangers. And you can see how frustrated the Rangers are becoming on the ice. They're, you know, they, they, they're, they're not, they're not winning the battles and, and that, you know, if they had won some battles last night, the kids won some battles. Um, they were probably the, the team's best line, but you almost have to look at, do you need to break them up to, to, I, I, here's the, here's the player I think has been most underserved in this series. It's Kako. Mm-hmm. I think Kako's, I, I think Kako's playing the best of the three. Uh, mm-hmm. At I this agree. Point. I think I and you know and, and he doesn't get on the second power play. I think you know you really need to need to take a look at getting Kako a little more ice time. 
what would be a major shift would be moving Kako up with Zavanna Jed and, and Kreider. Yeah, I don't and know if they're going to do that. They're going to do that because it disrupts everything. It, dis it disrupts a lot. It means moving Kane down to, you know, playing with Heedle. I don't think he's played a second with Phil Heedle. I think he, I think there was one game because I was looking back at it actually. I was looking at the kid lines numbers. They played it. I think it was all but one of the final 36 games yeah, of the yeah. regular season together. And yeah. it was, and it was that alignment. It was Kane on the third line with Lafreniere and Heedle. Okay. So that's, that's, you know, that would be their move, but it would be a pretty dramatic move. Um, I just thought, would like to see Kako get a little more ice time. I don't know where it comes from though, because, you know, you don't want to take Lafreniere off the, off the second right. power play. I don't think, um, certainly not taking Heedle off. So, um, I think that would be a reactionary move, you know, because yeah, of what we saw in games one and two that, you know, that's still attainable. It's not like they've fallen so far away from, you know, but they've gone, into deep, they've gone into deep funks before where, where yeah. power play doesn't self-correct after two games where yeah. it's four or five or seven and it takes a long, and there's no time in the playoffs. And that's, and that's the thing with, with Mika, you know, it, it comes up so quickly um you know you win you win the first two games five to one advantage that doesn't scare who cares it doesn't score who cares it doesn't matter lose a you know two one overtime game three okay still hasn't scored but it's only three games but now it's already four games and you know and they're in trouble and they need their leading goal scorer it just you know you don't have a lot of time to to correct um in the playoffs it just rushes at you and and um uh, the, the fact that they they have been in one one games maybe is is you know I think I think the Devils are probably looking at why can't Timo Meyer score mm. you know honestly Timo Meyer had you know he's he's been a factor because he's been it's been everywhere aggravating and he's been an instigator and he's been tough and, and you know he's you know he's been a presence but not an offensive one, you know, right. and, and, and this is a, you know, this is a 45 goal scorer, you know. Jack Hughes is the D New Jersey Devils offense. Well, Jack Hughes is a transcendent player. Jack you know, Hughes Jack is the New Hughes Jersey is, Devils yeah, offense. Right. And he's driving it. And um, um, they don't really have very many answers for him. He, he, you know, he always has the puck. And, um, you know, they've moved him to the wing a lot um, with Howell in the middle. That's probably their best setup. You know, they did make a lot of changes after the first. Yeah. At the first three games, it was a different lineup every night. Yeah. and they, But again, they they, you know, they've scored what three five on five goals yeah. you know so it's you know it's you know it's 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 on the rangers to generate it's it's on the rangers to um i i don't think there's any I, I don't think there's anything they can do to put doubt in the devil's minds at this point you know the devil's finished ahead of them they know they did they finished one point out of first place they're one of the top three or five teams all season um the rangers have been chasing them since november um it looked like they caught up to them, but but now that you know, now that they're even, it still looks like it still seems like they're chasing them um, because they are. They were they were chasing the puck. They were chasing the Devils almost all game last night. They they've got to get back in, into some sort of um, into some sort of structured game where they own the puck in the offensive zone. Um, I feel they, like they're they're playing they're, they're to their guys, you know, right. Listen, this is how they're built. They're built on marquee guys. They are. They're deep. You know, they've got a good fourth line. But if the top line, you know, if the top guys aren't going, you know, the fourth line is not going to win the game for them. They, you know, they, they worked hard. They had a couple of good shifts, I thought, um, in game four. But it's on the top guys, and and this is this is a marquee team. And you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if if this team can succeed. It's it's. Um, you know they they've they've made it very difficult for themselves. Where where you know they they you know it could have been easier. Right in, they had it right in front of yeah. them. Yeah, and you know talked about how they've known you know, they've gone through all of these situations last year. Well, they had a two nothing lead last year too, and 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 you know and in a different situation. That's what I just said but, earlier. But but you know they had a two nothing. You know so. So far, they've had two nothing leads and they've lost six straight games. You know, while while up two nothing, right? They lost four to Tampa and now two of the Devils. But um, you know, they were they were a better they were a better team coming from behind last year than they were in the lead. 
series, right? I mean, <laughs> Capo said that to me after practice one day. Yeah, but it, but it's true. They never had the lead, right? right? Never the series. It, until they're the never, Lightning series, yeah. Right, they were never ahead un yep. until until Tampa. Um, so now they, you know, they were up to nothing. Maybe they got a little comfortable. You know, maybe they. They did. They were very impressed with themselves too after the first two games. They were. I mean, right, rightfully so, though. But you don't really want were. that to show, <laughs> right? I, but you know, they were. You know, and they talked about well, we know we haven't won anything, but they were really impressed. And I, I think the way they came out Saturday was was very surprising. You know, they there was no emotional lift. No. Um, the way they came out last night was very surprising. There, there was there was very little, and I thought, you know, the crowd did try and get them into it last night at the start. Yeah. I think it was, it was just when you you know when when they saw the you know the same type of thing happening, it was you know as disappointing to them, I think, probably as it was to everybody else, and and maybe to the Rangers too. I I you know I I don't know, it, but it's um, you know they've. Um, they put themselves in a very tough spot. I feel like the Rangers in games three and four started to play to the Devils game, that track meet, chance for chance. And I think it was Adam Fox who said it. I don't know if it was before the series or when they got up to nothing. Someone asked about, you know, you know, is there a part of you that does kind of want to just get into a chance for chance with this team and, and you know, and blow them out that way? And Fox was like, no, that that's what they want. You know, that's their that's their game. That's what they want us to do. And they've kind of done that in games three and four. Let the devils dictate their speed and play their sort of style that made them so good during the regular season, that track meet, chance for chance, just going back and forth because the devils, that's where they thrive. Well, I don't think the Rangers have had the puck enough. You know, exactly. The Devils have had the puck. They've won pucks, and when they have it, it's tough to, you know, it's tough to take it away from them. Um, so I think New Jersey, New Jersey has dictated the game, but it's because they've had the puck all game. I, you know, mm -hmm. the Rangers can't get into the zone. They and and they weren't able to get it deep. There was no forecheck. Um, the Devils were able to fly out whenever you know, basically whenever they wanted. The, you know, it's interesting. One of their best ships came on on the shift where. Hughes scored the breakaway. You know, the you know, Kako took the shot. Nice save. You know, it gets to the net. Um, was it Kako or Lafreniere then who, who sent the puck through the crease? And then Siegenthaler just kind of backhands it out. Mm -hmm. And here's Hughes just streaking down the middle for a home run pass. So, um, you know, one, one of their best shifts was, was a shift early in the game on which they were scored upon. So uh, they, 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 they didn't do enough of anything in game four they just didn't yeah. game four was the worst game just four Sturkin far was, and away yeah so Sturkin was fine um uh you know he didn't have a lot to deal with and and again we're talking about the rangers playing poorly and source of optimism i guess is playing that poorly you're still one one um but you've got to score you've got to do something and and when again it goes back to a lot of the season when the power play wasn't working the top the top six or really, it was it was the one unit power play before they got Tarasenko. Yeah. But you know, when the when the power play wasn't going, then those guys weren't going five on five. You know, it, you know it's it's symbiotic for them. It is, and, and it, they you know they it's it's too simple to say they need Mika to take over, but they kind of do, you know. And look, they need more from Kane, who you know was very good in game two. I thought he was fine in game three. Um, not a presence at all in game four. Um, they need a little more from Tarasenko, I thought, you know, from last night's game, I thought, you know, it dropped off a little bit. Um, this, again, this is how they're built. They're built on their stars. And I, I think I said, I did, I, I wrote before the series that this, or, or I think in my cup preview, that this was going to be a referendum on on the construction of this team. And, and I think it is. And you know, not to get into the whole thing again, but um, they don't have a shutdown line. They're not built that way. Um, and they they couldn't, and, and again, they, they couldn't do that at the trade deadline. You know, mm -hmm. they, they weren't going to, you know, there, there, there's too much to do to, to, to reach right. the team yeah. at the end of the season. You know, you know. Um, at that point, you just go all in on it. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I think, you know, if they lose this round. Um, yeah. You know, well, you're going to, you know, there's going to be a lot. 
that's let's not go there just yet because we could open up that can of worms and we actually have to my also my biggest thing is I feel like there's there's been a lack of aggression as well from the Rangers in, in games three and four and that ties into the urgency thing and I've seen some discourse online uh about the Rangers lack of response with when Nico Heischer went into Shesterkin. Did you think that was a little strange or no. how did you say that? Yeah, I didn't really either, but I, I understand. No, he didn't barrel into him. He lost his edge. He, yeah. He, and, and what? Someone's going to jump on him and, yeah. and they're going to be, and they're going to uh, be in the box for four minutes or five. And, right. you, know, you have to, you know, you, you, you have to maintain some, some discipline there. Um, I think you know if 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 a ranger had jumped Heeshear there and and gotten a double minor or gotten a five minute major, you know people would have been saying well, you know what is that? I think that you know I I don't think they I think actually they they probably jostled Shostakin a little bit less last night than than they had um, the first few games. I, I don't think they got to the net as much last night as they did in, the, in in game three. But but you know back at the other end, the Rangers weren't getting to the net at all. Mm. And and going back to you know something I said earlier, Schmid's been good. He has. He, he has. has tested. I mean, he he's he's playing with a ton of confidence. He's giving them a lot of confidence. And I and I think too, when you go back to the first two games, um, you know, Vanacek just didn't play well. No, uh, not at he, all. He didn't, he, you know, he didn't really make a significant save. And when your goaltender is playing like that, it's impossible to play with confidence. So I think that played into the way the Devils looked in the first two games also. Um, I thought, you know, look, and I, and I'm not here to, to second guess Lindy Ruff because he's, you know, he's, he's got his team back 2-2. Two, two, but I thought he should have made the goaltender move after the first game. Mm -hmm. And I understand, you know, Vanacek had a terrific year. You, you go with the guys who yeah. got you there. But again, the play it, it it goes so quickly that you know one game too late can be one game uh, fatal. And but it wasn't. I you know, but Schmid is giving is is playing with confidence. Devils look organized in their own end. But again, where you know he hasn't been forced to go side to side much. Exactly. It, no, he's made, a, he's made a couple of rebound saves. Um, They've shot it straight into his chest more often than not. But you know he's a big guy, and they have to figure it out. Um, but but there but there's very little. There's been no sustained pressure. No. Against him, none. Um, you know you 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 know in the first two games, and it's and certainly in the first game. You know where, where Kreider called it um, rolling thunder, where it's just one line after another. He got the puck in, he forechecked, he took the body, created a chance. Next line came on, and 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 you know it was it was just momentum generating from shift to shift. Um, the last two games, there's there's been none of that, and and there was you know and you know total absence uh, of it in game four. Um, uh, yeah, the, the Rangers have to, you know, the, the Rangers need to decompress here today and um, figure it out and get back to work um, Wednesday. Well, game five is Thursday at Prudential Center and what seems like the Rangers home ice in New Jersey. Larry Brooks, we'll talk with you uh, after the series ends. Thanks for coming on. All right. Sounds good. All right. A lot of negativity on this podcast. So I had to flip the switch a little bit to a guy that Rangers fans love because he gets them going for playoff games, sometimes regular season, but more importantly, playoffs, because it's a different vibe when this guy, Grammy Award-winning opera singer John Brancy, they call it the Brantham now. Have you adopted the nickname the Brantham, John? I didn't know that. No. <laughs> That's nice. I, I like that. I like that. The the sound of that that sounds that sounds uh the Brantham Jake the Brantham. are you sure that's not just you that uh, calls I, Rangers fans on Twitter I saw were saying Brantham so I'll yeah, go by okay. Rangers fans on Twitter maybe I, it's I, a limited maybe I did no. see that I don't know I, I I can I can embrace it I can embrace it get the t-shirts bro you know you can visit johnbrancy .com or listen to your albums on Spotify wherever you listen to music but yeah. you could also uh, make shirts sure called the Brantham. And I like to call you my better looking doppelganger. Um, so there you go. I, ha I have been compared to you. That, yeah. that is true. That People is see true. you in the streets like, is that the pod father? Oh, no, that's, it, that's it, Sean Brands. It may just be our our uh, our barber, right? The, yeah, that the, might be it. We got the fresh Gillette shave going. Do, do you get recognized yeah. like in the streets by Ranger fans ever? And, yeah, they, yeah. They, I, 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 I'm sort of incognito when I'm on, on the street. I've got 
a pair of glasses on and a, and a and my Rangers hat. So it immediately, you know, it's my kind of Clark Kent look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I mean, I, I've gotten recognized uh, here and there, especially here in the uh, in New Jersey where I live um, near Montclair. I'll be on the train, the NJ Transit going in and, you know, there's Rangers fans and they're like, oh, my God, it's it's you. It's you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yes, it's it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it is I. Yeah, it's um, I. John, just back to last season's playoffs when you really just kind of put yourself on the map with Rangers nation. I, I, I please enlighten the fans and, and us. We don't really know how this whole booking of the national anthem singers go, but was it on a game by game business basis? Did they book you for the entire playoffs or did it just kind of spiral once it became clear how much fans really enjoyed listening to your rendition of the anthem? Well, I mentioned this recently to somebody and, um, my uh my anthem that i sang uh in february actually it was a Feb- it was february 2022 um was the first time i ever performed for a professional sports team mm-hmm. and it was the first time i'd ever attended a sporting event at msg oh. <laughs> so um i all of the things kind of i think coalesced and became one really incredible and fortuitous moment for me in my life and in my career mm. Um, and I, I brought some of my, uh, my colleagues, my, my friends who were opera singers to some of the games, some of the playoff games. And, you know, we're always dealing with different types of audiences and people. And there's something unique and very special, uh, to being the Rangers, um, anthem singer, because first of all, it's, it's the garden, you know, and you get to be at Madison Square Garden and singing where so many greats have performed, you know, over the, over the, the decades. Um, and then there's this kind of energy around obviously the team and, and the sport. And I, I, the one thing that I find that's really encouraging for me as an artist is, um, is the kids, you know, how many little kids and, and young people that are coming to these games that, you know, have no idea what opera singing is. Right. And I'm giving this rendition of the anthem that really is 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 that. It's operatic. Um, and so all of these things kind of coming together and then playoffs last year, I, I had had um, booked work during that time. So it, was, it wasn't the easiest thing to, <laughs> to manage. And it, it was definitely something that, um, you know, I'm looking at now in terms of my, my career and, and balancing where, where I am and, and how, I'm, how available I am mm-hmm. for, the, for these opportunities, especially during this time. Um, but now I'm, I'm bringing the same energy. You know, I, I am. I, I, these last two games, I, I went on the ice and um, I had this, you know, same energy for the team. And it's, it's, it's interesting to, to feel a, a different, because I think last time we had a, um, they broke their all time at home winning record in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So um, we're not in that right now, but <laughs> if there's anything that I can do, Maybe I need to maybe I need to slow it down a little bit because I, I always take it so fast. You know, it's ninety seconds is my is no. My you're perfect. But, we we got a puck to drop. We got deadlines. You know, I think you're good. Definitely don't change the speed. You're all you're all okay. good. Do they give you a time limit? Or are they like you got to cap this at ninety seconds? Like, do they have a stopwatch going? Because you know, in football, Super Bowl, you bet the over under on the national anthem. It's an actual bet. So, do you have like a set time to do it? No, I. Well, they, they, they always kind of give me the over under at rehearsal. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm always, I, I actually am really frequently at 90 seconds, like exactly because I take a, a specific tempo and, you know, some of the training that I have with singing, it's sort of in, in classical music, you know, metronomic, there's the metronome. So timing is actually like strict. Um, but no, I, I, it's not, it's not, I don't need to be 90 seconds, but it is nice that it is for them 90 seconds because then they can go to commercials. And I think that's why they've aired it more times 
than a lot of you know it 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 seems to me because it's a quick quicker anthem do you get nervous or like playoff game i mean i would imagine the nerves shoot up a little bit but you seem pretty pretty chill when you do it yeah i mean i i'm nervous backstage i'm jumping i'm like breathing deep and doing all the things that i know kind of keep the nerves in you know because i you want to utilize those nerves that energy is actually the energy that you want to put into the the performance um and i've i've honed that over many many years now performing and it's something that you can actually like bring into your voice and into the quality of the of the of the performance itself there's like different techniques to uh performance techniques to do that interesting have what, you have you have you had any interactions with the players you know it's funny i'm entering on the side of the uh opposing team mm. so i'm always with the opposing team mm. <laughs> i'm trying not to make eye contact <laughs> you know it's just, it's a weird kind of like beginning yeah. in some ways i kind of wish i was on you know with the rangers but then they come out in their their mm. area you know mm. um but yeah i've made i've made some you know hey how you doing kind yeah. of kind of thing. Some small talk. Yeah, some small talk. Uh like uh, Keandre Miller and I, you know, we we said hello to each other and he's like, you know, he 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 complimented me at one point. Oh. Um, but I saw like Igor running around like <laughs> warming up one one day cuz I come early to right. do the the, war, the the rehearsal and he's just like jogging around the Delta Lounge area. <laughs> I just like <laughs> I, I like saluted hey man. him yeah. and he saluted me back and he just yeah. kept running. <laughs> Have you sang the anthem anywhere else, any other games, arenas, anywhere else cool outside the garden? Yeah. Um, I did one Jets game last, last, uh, last year. Um, I would be down to do more games. I would I like different, different arenas and different places for sure. I'm kind of excited for the world cup coming to the the states um and i know that you know um metlife is going to be i think a pretty big location for it as far as i know um and then also the olympics in uh, 2028 in in la i'd love to be associated with that in some some fashion is there as an opera singer someone like you want to collab with like are you do you look at like andrea bocelli or like josh groban or those like your idols in the industry and people you'd work with because i imagine you're not like yeah i want to collab with drake like who who are the kind of artists you'd be surprised you know, actually with? i mean it <laughs> would be cool to collab with drake of course no no for sure um i think yeah i i i have a lot of respect for bocelli and um and groban and you know it's really cool that groban has made this uh, move into musical theater. He's now Sweeney Todd on Broadway. Shout out to Sweeney Todd. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm I'm really excited to. But um, shout out also to Gaten Matarazzo, who's from Stranger Things. He's a he's a big Rangers fan actually. He sung uh, the anthem himself, and he's in Sweeney Todd. Um, and we've we've done some voice lessons together. We met at the playoff games last year. Hmm. He's a great great young singer. Um, MSG yeah. celebrities connected. That's right. That's right. Um, but he he's a sick season ticket holder actually. He's a big fan. Oh, so oh yeah, he's been at almost every game. I feel like they show that's right. him all the time. That's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know Bocelli's coming in 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 December. He's he's always doing these holiday tours. I'd love to sing with him someday at MSG and putting that out there. I think that that would be a lot of fun. But in terms of like you know who would I love to collaborate with at the at the top level, um. I think for me, it's kind of, I'd love to, I'd love to sing in movies. I think that that would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd love to work with, uh, like the likes of Michael Giacchino, who is, uh, the composer of the new star Wars movies and also the, the, the Batman soundtrack and tons mm -hmm. of other stuff. He's, he's a really, really incredible, um, composer. And then I think when it comes to singers, you know, I think that uh, a voice can be added to a, like mine can be added to a lot of different types of music. And I also think that, you know, bringing back the tunes, those, those older tunes into the modern era, you know, like, like New York, New York, for instance, that I do at MSG, um, 
and also songs like Mac the Knife, which I've recently performed and stuff like that. It's it's there's a big opportunity right now because I I don't know a lot of people who are sort of carrying that torch into our time. And additionally, I don't know many guys from Jersey who are doing it because there was a lot of, there was a lot of them from this area in Jersey back in the day that that sort of made up the Rat Pack. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm exploring that repertoire and in terms of collaborations, I'm open. I'm open to collaborating with a lot of different people. All right. He's putting it out there right, right now. John Brancy, you can follow him on Twitter at John Brancy, listen to his music, see him at the Rangers games. John, I'll close it with this, uh, a little fun here. I actually did, sang in an opera voice in fourth grade or fifth grade in between acts in opera Yankee doodle dandy. Oh, God. So I, I want to try to bring back for a quick little <laughs> nugget the opera voice and see your reaction. No, to those. no, uh, no, 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 no. That was actually pretty good. Stop. I thought I want to see. Press stop. Press stop. Just recording. take a nice deep breath before you do it, dude. Hold on. Oh, is, my God. This, please. No. You might be you might be surprised, Molly. It's, you no. know, I, I do freestyle rap as well, but I won't do that. No. But uh, let, let's yeah, I kind of want to do New York, New York for just no. four lines. That's it. Just four lines. Can I uh, exit out? No, don't exit. <laughs> you, might, you might be impressed. Yeah, you, you have to know. stay on. This is, a vo- this is officially a voice lesson. I don't, I don't think I can look him in the face while he does it. I'll, I'm going to do New York. Yeah, don't look in the face. <laughs> I, I already feel weird look, you looking at this. All right, here we go. New York, New York. Here we go. Three, no. two. <laughs> if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. It's pretty good. Not bad, right? I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It wasn't that bad. But you got. You got to let it out. You got to let it out. You're holding it back. Can you give me the four lines, and we'll close I it could, out? With I that? could. I could. So let's hear it. If I can, whoa, that was too loud. A little further away, a little further. If away. I can there it is. make it there, yeah. I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. <laughs> and the garden goes crazy. That was a lot better than my rendition. Yeah. I can't believe we just did that. <laughs> That's what we like to do. John right. Brancy, we'll see you at the Garden, hopefully uh, for the next few games, maybe round two. And thanks for coming on up in the blue seats. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> All righty. Great stuff there from uh, John Brancy's. That says goodnight to episode 123 of Up in the Blue Seats, our Rangers podcast from the New York Post. Thanks to Andrew Hartz for helping me in producing the show. You can watch us on the New York Post Sports YouTube page. Give us a thumbs up. Comment below. Are you worried right now about the Rangers? Or is this playing out how you expected it? Comment below. And make sure you follow that up in the Blue Seats playlist. And if you're an audio person, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get podcasts. Give us a five-star rating. Write in a nice review. Follow Molly on Twitter at Molly Walker. That's two E's, two R's. And follow me at Jake Brown Radio. Is it a bad omen that you had to book a hotel in Raleigh already, Molly? Is that <laughs> is that jinxing the Rangers? Or uh, I, I know you got to do it you know, to get the room reserved and get your nice hotel, but... Uh, I hope you didn't just mush the Rangers. Yeah, no, we, we've we done that every series dating back to, to last season. It's just kind of something you've got to do in order to secure your place at the hotel of your preference. So I don't think that's a jinx or anything. It's kind of just a part of the beat writer life. <laughs> All right. At least you've done it before. So that makes me a little less worried that you mushed it because I, I mushed. You know, I said, I hope I hope none of the Mets get hurt. Edwin Diaz got hurt days later. So. Uh, I've mushed a lot. So let's not mush anything here on up in the blue seats for Molly Walker, Larry Brooks, John Brancy. I'm Jake Brown. We'll be back after this series ends. Now we will not be here Friday, but next week when the series ends, we'll recap and hopefully be looking ahead to round two. The Rangers can close this out. Thanks everybody for listening to up in the blue seats.